Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for another round of Just in Slime! The incredibly popular soon-to-be daytime TV show where you, the audience, answer Bible trivia questions to avoid getting slalalalimed. Don't worry, though. This is a television show, so we haven't yet figured out how to get the slime through the TV to you. But we're working on it. The rules are simple. I'll read a statement, then you'll have five seconds to decide if that statement is true or false. If you think it's true, then stand up. If you think it's false, then sit down. True, stand. False, sit. Easy enough, right? If you choose the wrong answer, you get slimed! Think you can make it through all six questions without getting slimed? Well, we're about to find out, because it's time to play Just in Slime! Here is the first statement. Jacob was Esau's father. True or false? Remember, stand if you think it's true, but sit if you think it's false. Okay, time's up. Who's standing? You just got slimed. Jacob was Esau's brother, not his dad. Now it's time for round two. Esau traded his birthright to Jacob for a bowl of soup. True or false? Don't forget, stand for true, sit for false. Okay, time's up. Who's standing? You are correct. I see you are starting to get the hang of this. Let's see how you do in round three. Jacob promised to work for seven years for the chance to marry his wife, Rachel. True or false? It's time to decide. Okay, time's up. Is anybody sitting down? Cause you just got slimed. Jacob did promise to work for seven years to marry his bride. Oh, how romantic. Okay, moving on to round four. Esau was never able to forgive Jacob for taking his birthright, and they fought their whole lives. True or false? Okay, time's up. Who is sitting down? You are correct. Although they had their disagreements, Jacob and Esau did not end up fighting their entire lives. Ooh, only two rounds to go. Jacob's name was eventually changed to Israel. True or false? Time is up. Who is sitting down? You just got slalalalimed. Jacob actually did become known by the name Israel. Ooh, here comes the final round. Jacob became the father of Abraham. True or false? Time is up! Is anyone standing? If so, you just got slimed! Abraham was actually Jacob's grandfather. Oh, well done, everyone. If you avoided the slime through all six rounds, that is very impressive. Thanks for playing Just in Slime!
Sister Chrissy back with you, ready for an extraordinary teaching today. Now, you've heard about Moses, right? Yeah, Moses did some great things in the Old Testament, parted the sea, delivered God's people from Egypt. But today we're going to focus on his brother. Yep. Did you know Moses had a brother? Yes, the power verse was, look at this first slide right here. Today's lesson is about Aaron. Moses brother Aaron and his sons in there you see Moses wrapping something around his brother Aaron and then we're going to this next slide because the power verse is all about Aaron and his sons and what God told Moses to do to them so here it is you shall anoint them consecrate them sanctify them that they may minister to me as high priests that's in Exodus 28, verse 41. Now, them, this scripture was to Moses to anoint, consecrate them, sanctify them, um, and anoint them. Who is the them again? And the next slide, that was his brother, Aaron. Now, Aaron was just his brother walking around, kicking it with his brother, but God said, hey, I need you to do something to them. He told them to do three things. First, anoint them. Second, consecrate. I didn't say concentrate. No, not concentrate, which you have to think with. Consecrate them. We're going to talk about that. And the last one was sanctify them. Sister Chrissy, what does all of this mean? See, God told Moses on the next slide to anoint. You know what anoint mean? Here I have some oil. And on that slide, you can see that oil is being poured on the head of someone. When someone is being anointed, that's what it means to rub oil on them. But not just to do it for any reason. It's for the purpose that they might be consecrated, not concentrate. Say it with me. Consecrate. 
Now, we'll talk about that. So Moses had to anoint his brothers and his sons, his brother and his sons, so that they might be consecrate. Now on the next slide, I'm going to show you what exactly it means to be consecrated and sanctified because they have the same meaning in the Hebrew language. It means to be set apart, dedicated, clean, pure and holy. So whenever someone was anointed to be consecrated, that means it was a display that Aaron and his sons were to be different from everybody else. They were consecrated. They were different. They were designated to be holy. God's special person, a people for God to serve God in only the way that they can. So we know what sanctify means and consecrate. It means to be set apart, dedicated, clean, pure for God's service. Do you see that picture there in that slide? There's a lot of people and everybody looked the same, but that one person who was standing up, they look different. Why? because they're consecrated. They've been made holy. They're a pure people unto God. So on the next slide, this is what Moses did to his brother and, and his sons, Aaron and his sons. He washed them. As you can see in the next slide, he took some water and God told him to wash the sons. And then he put on some special clothes, these ephos, these holy clothes. They were white because he was pure. He's holy unto God. He's different not like anybody else. And not only the clothes were different, but they put on a breastplate. You'll learn about that later and some other things. Now, every time that the priests, before they went into that place of the Holy Holies that we talked about before, they had to wash themselves. Why? And they also had to bring a new sacrifice where blood was shed. Why? We'll talk about that later. So on the next slide, after Moses washed Aaron and his sons, he then took that oil and poured it on them to anoint them. And they sanctified them. Remember, it pronounced to the whole world, these men are clean. They're appointed. They're dedicated to God to be the holy people for the Lord and his service. Wow. Whoever thought just pouring oil on someone was so powerful to God because it's an open show. You're different. You're set apart. You're not like anybody else. You're made holy. I'm clean and I'm pure. That's a big declaration. The pure thing of anointing. Now, Sister Chrissy, what does that have to do with me? Moses pouring oil on his brother, declaring that he's sanctified, set apart, made holy for God. Well, guess what? We too have been sanctified, set apart. Do you see in that slide all those people in that row? But there's one person that's looking different. The moment, guys, you became believers, we choose to believe that God sent his son to die for us and to cleanse us. Cleanse us. We've been made holy too. God sanctify us. But wait, Sister Chrissy, nobody poured oil on my head. I know. It's not by the oil. It is by your faith. Faith, you made, you are made righteous. You are God's own special people. Now, in the in the New Testament, 1 Peter 2 and 9, God says, You are a chosen generation. Just like Aaron and his sons were chosen by God to be a high priest, it says, You're a chosen generation. Not only are you chosen, but you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own special people. You're special to God. You're not like anybody else. God chose you. Just like he picked out Aaron and said, you're going to be my high priest. He picked out you. I don't know your name, but God said, hey, you, you're mine. You're my own special person. And because you accept the gift that I've given to you, you are clean. You are made holy. You are pure. When God see you, you are a holy priest, just like he see his, um, just, just like he saw Aaron and his sons. But wait a minute, how do I become that way? How, there, there was no oil poured upon me. The next slide, 
is through the blood. Remember, we've been learning so much about the blood of Jesus. That blood was some powerful blood because the moment Jesus died for you, that blood, that blood cleansed you of all of your sins. What is sin? Anything you say, do, think that doesn't please the Lord, everybody sin. All human, if you're in this flesh, you're going to want to sin and you are going to sin. But there was one person who was in this flesh and his body who didn't sin. That was Jesus. And that's why his blood is the only blood that can cleanse us, make us forgiven, made holy, just like Aaron and his sons. So on the next slide, we've been set apart too. We've been made clean. We're wholly dedicated to God for a job. A job. Aaron and his sons, they had a job. They were to be God's high priest. Sister Chrissy, God wants me to have a job? No, not necessarily a job, boys and girls. It's every day of your life. You are God's special people and he lives through you. God has a job every day. He's ordained every day of your life and he wants you to show the world through, he'll do it through you, that you are God's own special people. Don't worry about what you have to do. He'll do it through you. And um, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, we are God's workmanship. God's doing the work. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God ordained that we should walk in them. Every day of your life, there's some good works set up. God already planned it out. You're walking through them. And everyone will say, hey, that person's different. He's different. He doesn't talk like the rest of us. That's because you're a believer. God is living through you. You're his own special people. I'm not like everybody else. You're not like everybody else. God has set up these good works and our, and our love. The Bible says they will know you are Christian by your love. Are you showing love to everyone? That's the number one way that God will say, that people will say, hey, you're different. It's the love of God. It's the works of God that he's working in me that will show everyone I'm sanctified. I'm set apart. I'm a holy people for God, for his service every day. Now, why did you get sanctified? Why are you set apart? In this next slide, what makes you anointed, wholly set apart from everyone else? It's only through the blood of Jesus. And also in that slide, there's Moses again and his brother Aaron and his sons. Where are they being sprinkled with? Blood. Not only were they anointed, but Moses also had to sprinkle some blood upon them. Your next, uh, your next teaching will show you more about that. But now that you know you are different, you're set apart, you're not like everyone else, you are God's special people. You need to know it and believe it because something, sometimes things will happen will make you think, well, hey, no, I, ju I just can't do it. Don't think that way. Repeat after me with this next slide. You see that boy holding up victory? I am anointed. I am appointed to do whatever God calls me to do. You can do it. Because God chose you. You're his own special people. You are set apart. You're consecrated, sanctified to do whatever thing, whatever, whatever God calls you to do. Now, because you've been cleansed by the blood, I have an example to tell you. This happened to me. I forgot who I was. I forgot that I was God's own special people, that God chose me and set me, up, set me apart from everybody else. I had a real job. I was starting this new job and it was such a huge job and I was afraid that I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to be embarrassed. I'm going to look like a fool. I'm not as smart as all of these people around me. And every day when I woke up to go to work, I'll be scared like, Lord, please help me. I don't know how to do this job. And they're going to find out that I don't know what I'm doing. And that went on for a couple of days and a couple of days and then I said to myself, hey, I'm not like everybody else. I've been called to do this job and I've been set apart. Who's living in me? 
The Lord is living through me and I'm God's special people. I don't have to worry. God has already ordained this work and he's going to do it through me. and He's going to make me look good because I'm not like anybody else. And the moment I knew that and I started to say, hey, I'm anointed. God called me to do this. I'm not like anybody else. I'm sanctified. I'm God's own chosen people. And I began to do that job and. I look good doing it because I didn't trust in myself. I trusted in the living God who was living through me. Now, remember, you can do whatever because the Lord is working through you to do great, to be his chosen people. You see this girl here in that picture? That's the Lord in back of her saying, do not fear. I am with you. If God called you to do something, he's with you. He chose you for a reason. He could have chose anybody, but he chose you. You're so special to God and you can live and show the whole world, hey, I'm different. Yes, I'm different because the holy God is living in me and he called me to do this. And I'm anointed, I'm consecrated, sanctified, made holy by God himself because I believe. Now, let's recap on this next slide. We are just like Aaron and his sons. We are cleansed, anointed, God's special person special people for his service. Whatever God has called you to do, you are well prepared to do it. Now, that's the benefits for God's children. Are you God's child? It's so simple. All it does is take belief. Now, we're not like Aaron getting oil poured on us. It's belief in God's son that he sent his son to cleanse us from all of our sins. We have to believe it with our heart and confess it with our mouth. Now, I'm going to read the prayer of salvation. Hopefully you believe it in your heart. And as I'm praying, you repeat after me, you confess it with your mouth and you can become God's child. Let's go. Dear God, thank you for loving me and for sending your son to die for my sins. I am sorry for my sins and I receive Jesus Christ as my savior. Now as your child, I turn my entire life over to you. Amen. You just became God's child, a holy people, sanctified, consecrated. You're different from everybody else. I love you and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye. Super.